We all have this negative self-talk that goes in our head. Guess what? There's enough people that are telling us we can't do it, that we're not good enough. Why do we want to tell ourselves that? We know for a fact that thoughts influence action. It is time to be more selfish, where it's all about you and taking care of you. If you want to live your dream, you will have to fight for it. You will have to fight the greatest battles of your life. You will have to battle the external enemy. You've got to be willing to test yourself. You've got to be willing to look inside yourself and find out who you really are. You've got to be willing to stare nakedly at your inadequacies and be willing to push through them. Prove to yourself how much work you can put in. You know how much work it's gonna take and you know the time it takes. Invest in yourself to make your life better. So that way, when you achieve that success, it gives you so much satisfaction because you know you worked your butt off. Remember this, you're the lead character in the story of your life and the person who controls that script is you and your God. And at any point, you can decide to step into a new chapter. You can step into be a whole new leading character. I'm going to discover the opportunity for me to grow and for me to get better. I'm telling you, I've already made up my mind that I know I will fall down. I know that I will stumble, but I already see myself getting back up. Therefore, I'm never down. I'm either up or getting back up. I'm going to learn. Greatest challenge and the greatest obstacle any human will face is their own doubts, their own fears, and their own conditioned thoughts. You got to love yourself. It's about self-love. Start understanding that if you're going to do something with your life, you got to fall in love with yourself again. You owe it to yourself to see how far you can go in life. You owe it to yourself to earn the kind of money you want to earn. You owe it to yourself to be the kind of person you want to be, to feel the energy you want to feel, to have the body you want to have from doing the work you know you are capable of doing. You owe it to yourself to feel the pride of knowing you made your life. You didn't get lucky. You worked for it. You sacrificed. When it was hard, you pushed harder. Because you were born to be a beacon of light. You were born to overcome any fear or any fright. You were born to have next level vision and not just sight. You were born with the heart, will, and passion to never give up and fight and fight and fight. The greatest achievements in the world defy logic. They are born from belief. The greatest achievements did not come from someone who saw what was possible and didn't dare attempt better. The greatest achievements came from those who see what is possible, but still believe they can achieve something impossible. Life seemingly does not wish to waste success on the unprepared. Life says, why waste a fortune on this person? They're not prepared to do the right things with it. They're not prepared to use it wisely. If a fortune was bestowed upon this unprepared person, it would probably be wasted. The people that could have been touched won't be touched. What could have been done won't be done because this fortune will have been wasted on the unprepared person. So not only look for fortune, not only look for the promise, but prepare yourself and ask of yourself, what can I do to make myself ready? Because remember, life was designed not to give us what we want, not to give us what we need, but life was designed to give us what we deserve. Every value in life must be paid for. And those that pay are the ones that get it. It says those that give receive. Someone says, I wish to receive, I wish to receive. You don't have to concentrate on receiving. Just become a good giver. It says, those that search will find. Someone says, well, I need to find some good ideas to help change my life for the future. Then to find good ideas, that doesn't come because you need them. It comes, it comes because you search for them. If you want good ideas, you've got to go after them. You've got to go to the class, you've got to go to the workshop, you've got to go to the training, go to the book, right? You've got to go to the journal. Go where good ideas are being taught, go searching, go looking, because good ideas are not going to be wasted on those that are not seeking, searching, well prepared. So, prepare yourself to be ready. 
for fortune when it comes, to be ready for challenge when it comes, to be ready for opportunity when it comes. Opportunity comes along and passes by the person that is not well prepared. I want to prepare myself this year for next year. Yes, I wish to be effective this year, but I'm also thinking of ways, how could I be better? How could my ideas be more powerful? How could they be sharper, more clear? How could I reach some people uh, next year that I perhaps can't reach this year? I haven't reached deep enough into my own soul to affect some people. Some people just pass by and say, hey, what a good speech. But how could I make it stronger than that, deeper than that, more powerful than that? I cannot be as powerful as I could be next year. You know, you can't go to the, to the 10th grade and the 5th grade. You just got to go through the grade. But the more you are prepared, when the 10th grade finally comes, now you can cash in and get two times, three times, five times more value from it by being prepared. There is no problem you cannot solve, no obstacle you cannot overcome, and no goal that you cannot achieve by tapping into your creative mind, exactly as it is today. You have far more intelligence and mental potential right now than you could ever use. Even if you lived 100 years, just because you have not accessed all of your mental powers up until now does not mean that you cannot begin using them from this day forward. Physical fitness and mental fitness are very similar in some respects. If you want to become physically fit, you have to work out and engage in physical exercise. If you want to build physical muscles, you must pump iron and drive new blood into your muscles by straining them with dumbbells or barbells. The more stress you put on your muscles, the stronger they become over time. Your mind is very similar. In order to build your mental muscles, you have to pump mental iron. You have to put stress and strain on your brain, concentrating all of your mental energies to generate ideas and solutions and to solve problems on the way to your goals. The most powerful technique for improving your intelligence and increasing your creativity is what I call mindstorming. The way it works is simple. The results that you get will be so amazing as to be life-changing. You begin the mindstorming process by first getting a clean sheet of paper. At the top of this page, you write your goal or problem in the form of a question. The simpler and more specific the question, the better will be the quality of the answers that you generate in response to it. Each of your answers should be written using the three P form. It should be personal, positive, and in the present tense. In other words, your answers should be written as affirmations or instructions from your conscious mind to your subconscious mind. Often, you will write down answers on this sheet and promptly forget them. Then sometime later, as a result of superconscious functioning, you will attract into your life an opportunity to put one of your answers into action. Once you have written your question at the top of the page, you then discipline yourself to generate at least 20 answers to that question. You can write down more than 20 answers to the question, but it is essential in this exercise that you set a goal for a minimum of 20. Your first three to five answers will be easy. You will quickly come up with answers like work harder, start earlier, and stay later. Work on higher value tasks. Once you have made a list of what you have to do, organized your goals, determined the highest and most valuable priority, then pick the most important thing and begin working on it and stay with it until it's finished. Now people say, well, if I stay with this task until it's finished, I won't get anything else done. That doesn't matter. If it's the most valuable thing that you have to do, it's the most important thing that you could be working on. Now it's a wonderful thing. When you concentrate and work intensely on an important task, it gives you a feeling of energy and enthusiasm. When you complete an important task, your self-esteem goes up. You feel like a winner. You feel great about yourself. But if you work away on low priority tasks, even if you complete them and do them well, you don't get any bang for the buck. You don't get any excitement or thrill from doing something that's not important. As a matter of fact, most stress, anxiety, frustration in the world of work today comes from working very hard on irrelevant tasks. Benjamin Trigo said, if it's not worth doing, it's not worth doing right. And I think it was Drucker who said, the very worst thing in the world is to do very well what need not be done at all. The sixth key to time management is deadlines. How do you set deadlines? 
First of all, when you set the goal, when you specify the task, set the deadline when it's going to be accomplished. Always set the deadline with lots of room to spare and always try to finish before the deadline. Tell other people that you're going to finish by this deadline. Promise others that you'll have your work done. It's a powerful way to act as what is called a forcing system. A forcing system is something that motivates you to stay at it. Because if you don't set a deadline and give yourself a forcing system, you fall into the trap of what is called Parkinson's Law. Now, Parkinson's Law says that work expands to fill the time allotted for it. But if you have two hours of work to do and eight hours of time, you will stretch that work over eight hours. Parkinson's Law also says that work contracts to fill the time allotted for it. If you have eight hours of work to do, and because of an emergency you have to have it done in two hours, you will get it done in two hours. Highly effective people are always setting tight, stringent, disciplined deadlines on themselves so they get more work done in a short period of time rather than less work done in a long period of time.